Alrighty y'all, so we have our clothing in place and we have our character and now it's time to add some hair. So I've also organized my scene a little bit. I added a null that I named clothing and I just put our clothes in there. I also added the redshift render tag and turned on geometry's uh, override and their tessellation and displacement. Um, so definitely turn that on to get some smoother uh, looks to some of these jagged polygons. And then I'm also going to drag this archive null I made down to the bottom, disable it because we're going to be putting copies there if we need anything extra. Like I'm going to make a copy of our Genesis 8 male figure just because I'm going to be turning this editable, I believe, and making the hair cap um, on that. So essentially too, I want to explain that I'm going to be doing 2D hair cards. Um, Blender makes this much easier. I don't use Blender, but I know that this is like part of their new hair system, but um, I found a way to do 2D hair cards in Cinema 4D, so I'll just be showing you that. Yeah, I just thought this would be helpful to show and um, I, I figured it will help other people as far as speed and render times and things like that. So uh, we have our copy of our guy in archive. Let's hit C on our Genesis 8 mail. And hopefully he should still, yeah, he should still move. So I'm going to turn off our IPR for now. Um, but he still moves, uh, so that's good. And we need him to be editable because we're going to be adding hair. For that to happen, we need to just be able to add hair directly onto him. Let's close our Redshift render view for now. And we're going to get out of our camera because just I don't want to accidentally be moving our camera around while we're trying to do things. And let's just hide our clothing for now so it's easier to work with. Um, so I am going to be doing just kind of, I don't know, a wispy hairdo. Um, and what we're going to do first is we're going to just hit our guy. We're going to go simulate hair objects, add hair. And that might take a minute. Yep. Okay. And we're just going to go to the groom tab. And if your screen's looking like mine, hit control A. And that will select all the guides and then just hit delete because we're gonna be manually adding guides. We just want this hair object showing up here in the layers panel. So now that we're in the groom tab, let's go up here to the add guides button. And now we can start adding these, but let's change our radius to, uh, to one our step to like 10 and our count to one and also the length let's just try like 30 for now let's just see what that's like and then let's also go to the start of our animation because it's easier to work with in t-pose so i'm going to let's see i kind of i think i want a side part so i'm not actually going to start in the middle like i usually do i'm just going to go to the top of his head and you could go into the top view, but I'm just going to start here. I'm going to just start drawing. So there's some hairs that I'll be brushing down. And obviously the hair is still way too long. Wow, those hairs are really long. Okay, let's just put both sides of the starting hair in. So that will be brushed the other way. I'll add some more hairs. We'll just add some more to this side too. Before we do anything, we should change our length. Let's go to hair guides and let's take the length down. I don't know, maybe to like 18. And get back in close. And we're going to click our brush tool, hit uh, collisions and select it only. Also, let's go to our Genesis 8 mail, right click, go to hair tags, hair collider. And um, let's go back to our hair. Now we'll just, that will help ensure that it doesn't collide with our mesh. And let's also on our brush, let's set the collision radius to one. So that should help too. So selected only, we'll only be brushing those ones we picked with the brush tool. So let's start brushing. Oh, and I think we'll have to up our guides a little bit or the segments on our guides, excuse me. Um, let's also change our segments. 
select all and let's change this to maybe like 15. So that should just be a little bit smoother. And we can enable our backdrop again. Um, okay. So I know that looks weird right now, but don't worry about it. Uh, okay, let's save this. What we're gonna be doing is we're gonna re be replacing the guides with the 2D uh, hair card we're gonna be making. So we can close out of the uh, groom tab for now. Let's just go back to standard and let's make a plain object. And you're gonna set this to positive Z axis and let's just change this to, I don't know, like two by 20. Um, let me turn NB um, to see the lines and then I'm going to move this plane up and to the side. 30 or 20 for the height might be okay. Let's just try 30 to be safe. And then we only need uh, maybe even just one for the width segment and maybe like maybe like 20 for the height and two, let's just do two for the width to be safe. So this will become our hair card. Uh, we can hit NA again. We're going to create a new material and we're gonna add this to our plane. And we're gonna go in here and I'm gonna have this linked in the description, but I found a free image pack online of different hair textures. Um, so I'm going to be using one from there that I've just personally edited together. So I will share, uh, I will share this with you all if you want to just use the one I edited. But essentially you drag that image into the node editor and then you're going to pull this into your opacity channel on the redshift material. So if we deselect that, you can see it's already showing up in the viewport. Um, so maybe we want to stretch this out a little bit, the V length. So that now is stretching for the whole length of the plane. Let's just rename this to hair and let's also make it editable by hitting C. So this is going to be our strand card and maybe we'll even increase the, the length of the U and maybe offset the you a bit yeah to like that i think that looks good and basically everywhere we have a guide we're going to be replacing that with a um one of these hair cards so go to our hair we go to generate and instead you can uncheck render hairs and instead where it says type none you're going to go to instance and this new tab comes up and you're going to go and you're going to use the little picker tool and you'll hit hair so now you can see we've got all of these planes kind of all facing all over the place. So the key here will be brushing things till they look flat. Um, it's kind of tricky. Um, it took me a long time to brush things just to be in exactly the right way. But um, I'll just try showing you what that's like a little bit. Actually, maybe we should look at first what this looks like in the Redshift render view, just so you can see. And let's change our hair to be like bright red. So it really stands out. Oh, and I forgot one thing. Go to your hair and in the generate tab, there's a checkbox that says keep textures. Make sure you enable that. And now we should be seeing our hair strands. So this obviously looks a little funny. Let's try brushing some things. So the nice thing is it's much faster to work with because you can just see um, where everything's kind of turning and how the images are looking, um, which is just super nice. I really like that. Um, and if you really need to, you can just select one individual plane that you want to brush and uh, that just might make some of this a little bit easier instead of brushing them all. But yeah, it takes some finagling. It's not Perfect. You could always just individually go and lay a bunch of planes down um, if you'd prefer. Um, totally up to you. 
but yeah, I might have made the hair too close to the forehead <laughs> or too far down, I mean. So in the hairs tab, even though we're not using regular hairs, I think you can do uh, you can do a number here and it will move the roots specifically. So I think if we do like 0.1 or minus 0 0.01, uh, that will just offset the roots a little bit for us, which is kind of nice. And obviously this hair doesn't look perfect right now. Um, so I'm going to actually go down to this cloning tab and I'm going to set that to one and set the roots to 0 0.01 and then tip to 0 0.001. And that's just added a single clone um, on uh, next to the other hairs, but it's 0 0.001 centimeters off um, from the other. And let's also check set roots. Also another tip for the hair, if we go and we select all of our um, guides by pressing control A, and then if we go to the add guides button and we check this interpolated box, then when we draw any new hairs, it will add those following the curve of how we've brushed our existing hairs. So that's super nice. I think it's a really great feature. Um, so yeah, I recommend doing that. Um, we can also add some more along here. And obviously this is gonna look crazy right now, but we will change that. I think I need to resize the hair a little bit. Ah, I think part of it is the thickness we have on the hair. So if we go to thickness and change the root from one to 0.2, maybe, yeah. Okay, and then the tip from 0.1 to 0.05, that's going to change how thick our hairs were showing, so that's helpful. And then maybe we can just add some more clones. So let's try going to the hairs tab and maybe we set the clone to two or three. You know, this is totally up to you. Um, and then since we have our guide still, actually, let's, let's add some more hairs here. And I'm just going to speed along through this process or cut to it when I'm done adding some more hairs. And then really, I'm just going to kind of groom through this. Um, but I'll come back to you guys once I'm done. Uh, again, this is just a matter of adding some more hairs, um, and then grooming it to how you like it. Um, yeah. I don't think there's too much to it that I can really explain other than you just trying it out and playing around with it. So I'll be back in a moment. Okay, so I tried enabling dynamics and it was making my machine run really slow for whatever reason. And I honestly think it's just because the mesh density on both the clothing and the character is really high. So there's just a lot that's already heavy on the machine. So instead, I'm not gonna enable dynamics on this hair but you can watch my other hair tutorial just to learn a bit more about hair and dynamics and um, what you could even do if you wanted some flyaway pieces of the hair that were still moving is you could duplicate this hair layer, delete the existing hair guides, and then just add a few more because it will still be generating from that instance of our hair card that we made. So, and then that one you could just have dynamics on, but maybe you just want to do that for some pieces by the ears. But I really just wanted to show you guys how I made the 2D hair cards um, in here. And if you're seeing any weird settings where like here you see there's still like some white, um, like harsh edges showing on the hair, that's just, I think we don't have enough quality on the transparency. Um, and that's in your render settings. So just go to render settings and then redshift and I think it's globals and set the transparency, try like 20 and that should probably go away. You might have to play with it, go even higher sometimes. Oh, and it also could be that our hair uh, material is not totally rough and we, we kind of want that. Also, um, because this is hair, uh, we can double click on the original hair uh, material and we can start adding things like, uh, you know, clump and uh, curl or I mean wave. It'll look crazy in a second here probably. 
Let's actually also add a cropped box here. Um, let's see. Maybe we don't want that. Maybe we want twist. So that's kind of interesting. Um, frizz, maybe. Yeah, and then I also do want to change the hair color. Um, let's try, let's try white just to do something interesting. Maybe make it kind of an abstract character. Um, yeah, I think that looks cool. It also just blends in with the head a little bit easier, so that's nice. Um, but this is probably about the time where I'll add some more clones and just tweak some of these, uh, hair material settings. Um, and then probably go in and start adding the Daz materials as well for our final character render. So I might do that. Um, I'll play around with it a little bit. Um, if you have any questions about anything in the process, please comment below. Um, I can break down another video for you showing that, but this is the hair portion. And I'm just gonna speed through kind of some of the other things I do uh, to set up this character. Ooh, I'm also going to show you guys a fun little tip. Um, I have all these materials for my Daz character that match up with some of the selection tags that the character exports with. Um, and Cinema 4D has a lot of great image textures that you can utilize. Um, I don't know if I just type pattern, maybe we can find some good ones here. Yeah, so they've got they've got a lot of really already interesting things here in the asset browser. Um, what you can do, I'll just go into uh, I'll go into the face material. I'm going to create a bump blender, and let's just pull our first one in there, and then let's create another one of these also for our second layer, and let's just pull in. Let's see, let's pull in one of these natural tile patterns and let's connect that to our bump map. And then I'm gonna duplicate our camera and zoom, zoom in just so you can see what this is doing. And then we just need to go back to our face material and our bump blender and let's click additive mode and then let's take our blend weight all the way up. We'll just do this for now. Oh, it's cause I didn't connect it to the bump map. <laughs> That will do it. So that's way too much. Let's bring that back down to like, what was it? 0.2 or 0.3 or something. And then we're gonna scale this down, but let's try three and three. So I'm just showing this just as an example. Um, I've used this before with some of the swirly patterns that were on this guy. Um, and that was super fun to do, but I just wanted to make sure I threw um, a little bit of recording in here to show you how you might achieve something like that as well. But I'm gonna get rid of it just because I don't need it. And yeah, that's kind of the essentials with the character. Um, I'm gonna throw a little bit of a LUT onto this image um, just to add some more interesting stuff and maybe some bloom so that when the eyes are um, glowing, I really wanna add some brightness there like that. I think that's our character. So I'm gonna render him out. Uh, but before I do that, let's set our aperture and bokeh. I'm gonna set this down to like four. And I'm gonna use the focus click area thing to, I'll just pick his eyes for now. And then I'm just gonna hit render. All right, everybody, that was the character creation course or series. Um, I really hope you enjoyed. I hope you are proud of the work that you have done and that you could just enjoy the whole process. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm always ideating on new ideas for videos to make. So if you have any suggestions or things you think would be fun to make a tutorial on, please let me know in the comments. Uh, if you enjoyed, I hope you stick around and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks so much for watching, guys.
Bye.